used to be here uh, in the Mechanics Institute because many years ago, 40 years ago, I worked for the TUC in London. And this is, of course, the birthplace of the TUC. Um, so it's really uh, fitting in many ways that I'm here in front of you. Um, I'm going to be talking or giving you a comparison between uh, the effects at Fukushima and Chernobyl. Not in any macabre way to say that you know, one's worse than the other, but as a heuristic device that in other words, to, so that we can learn by comparing the two. Um, at university, uh, um, lecturers always use comparisons uh, because it's a good way of weighing up um, uh, the information so you can, you've got some benchmarks against each other. I'm uh, very quickly going to run through um, what happened at uh, Fukushima. Um, this is the explosion in Unit 1. Um, some of you who were here at, uh, in Manchester yesterday will see it seen it before. This is the explosion two days later at Unit 3. Um, and there were two more explosions, which were not videoed because they were very early in the morning. It was still dark. And this is the damage to two reactors. One, two, three, and four. Um, and this gives you a better view of three and four. In other words, these explosions were um, massive. Uh, they destroyed the, the units. Many uh, newspaper reports, reports say the triple meltdown at, at Fukushima. Now, what we should really say is quadruple explosion, triple meltdown. That's the reality of it. And another point, as I explained yesterday, the action is still going on, even today. This is the, uh, the famous horseshoe-shaped uh, deposition of cesium-137. Um, this is the uh, dispersion to sea from um, uh, the plants. Uh, for those people who are really interested, um, there is a video which I tried to get onto this PowerPoint, but my best efforts failed. <laughs> Technologies <laughs> um, won again. But um, for those people who, uh, um, this PowerPoint will be available. This uh, uh, URL gives you a, a very, very good uh, French video, three and a half minutes, of the dispersion um, of the air emissions from Fukushima. It is frightening. I only wish I could have shown it to you. Um, this is the end result. Um, this is Fukushima here. And the cloud went right around the bow. Of course, the concentrations were quite low, but nevertheless, it went right in the world. Uh, today, these, they have a massive problem with the, uh, the water which they use for cooling the reactors. Um, yes, they're still pumping water over the reactors. You don't see it. Um, they the, the, the built uh, shells around the reactors, so you can't see the actual uh, uh, cooling operations going on. But they pump dyed water over the reactors, over reactor shells, to keep the, cool, the fuel cool. And so the present position at uh, Fukushima is that um, You've got uh, very high levels of con uh, concentrations in the cooling water, about 600 times the Japanese limit. Um, they're having real problems about what to do, how to store all this water. Um, effectively, the water is contaminated with tritium, concentration of roughly speaking 500 kilobags um, per uh, liter. Um, which is extremely high concentration, uh, with, with megabex. Uh, we've got 140,000 evacuees uh, still existing. Um, the Japanese government is trying to sort of cajole people back into their own homes. About 12,000 workers were exposed to very high concentrations. It's true that there are altogether about 40,000 workers because what happens is that they put them in until they get their limit, which is uh, 20 minutes sieverts, and then out they go again. But the collective dose is still high. Um, we don't know where the melted reactor cores are. Um, when we send in 
on uh, typical sins in um, robots, um, the electronics are fried within five, ten minutes or so, so you've got no idea what's happening. And of course we've got the um, spent fuels in uh, the, of three of the reactors. In a nutshell, um, 140,000 people are, were, are still evacuated. Um, tens of thousands of cases of post-trauma stress disorder, depression, anxiety disorders. 2,000 deaths from the evacuations, which were necessary because of the high radiation levels. Uh, this is Japanese government figures that I'm quoting here. Um, uh, those deaths include from ill health and suicides, a large number of suicides, difficult to get the number. Um, the deaths were mainly old people who just couldn't cope with the uh, sudden uprooting and re relocation. Many of the people who were in hospitals were, just had their tubes yanked and were carted off. Many of them died. It was terrible. Um, I, I, I visited uh, Japan last year and I heard many of the stories. And let me tell you, they're fairly heartrending. They really are. Um, anybody uh, who visited uh, visits Japan must say never again, but of course, the government takes the opposite view. Um, about 8% of Japan's land area, which is 30,000 km, square kilometers, um, including parts of Tokyo, were contaminated above uh, 10 kilobags per square meter. And as far as economic loss are concerned, there's various estimates um, earlier this week about 100 million billion, sorry, I should say. But I've seen as high as 500 billion. Now I'm going to jump to Chernobyl back in the 86, um, one reactor, um, but it had about 1,600 tons of graphite as a moderator, and that burned for between eight and 10 days and that, uh, at very high temperatures, and that is why it contaminated the whole of Europe. This is a map um, compiled by the European Commission in 1996, basically there were uh, helicopter flights and, and also small airplane flights with uh, big gamma detectors pointing down, one in front, one in back, and they flew back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for about two years. Massive, massive job. Congratulations to them for doing this. One of the really fascinating things about this, this is in the original torture report, is that UNSCARE never referred to this, these maps. Neither did WHO, neither does RCRP, and neither does IAEA. Nobody refers to these maps. And yet, one picture is worth maybe a thousand words here, and it shows you the massive contamination throughout the rest of the whole of Europe. 40, about roughly 40% of the uh, source term from Chern uh, Chernobyl landed in Western Europe. <laughs> and, um, we all, the official figures are the official uh, IAEA, WHO, all only talk about uh, the former Soviet countries, but look, you know, all, the, all the other countries got it. Um, this is interesting because it shows you how the UK got it. Hands up those who know the most highly contaminated part of Britain um, from, <laughs> uh, from Chernobyl. And the answer is, Nikki? Aha. Uh -huh. How ironic can you get, huh? Yeah, Sellafield really got it. Um, uh, I was uh, commissioned by the uh, Vienna city government and David and, um, and also Reinhold to write a report, an update of uh, Chernobyl, a uh, torture report. And because they knew that Austria got it, and they asked me to focus, on, write a chapter on, a couple of chapters that turned out on Austria. And as you can see here, Austria did get it, unfortunately. I don't know if you already saw it, sad about that. The one country which is anti nuclear got it too. Again, ironic. Um, I think I have a slide here. Yeah, yeah here we go, the UK. Um, and you can see the concentrations here of the West Coast. Um, 
on national television a few years ago, some pro uh, scientists said, alleged, they actually said on television, that, um, that Chernobyl cloud never reached uh, Britain. Another misspeech. Uh, absolutely crazy, of course, and there's the evidence right in front of you. The scientists concerned should have been aware of this. Now, uh, this is a rather controversial map. It uh, was given to me by Richard Wakeford, um, who used to work for BNFL. He's a good scientist, even though he's on the wrong side, so to speak, but uh, we speak to each other regularly and uh, uh, have a lot of, I uh, have high regard for his scientific work, um, carefully phrased. Um, he drew up this map, and basically it was a, the previous map that I showed you of uh, Fukushima, and on the same scale as this map around uh, Chernobyl, which is here. This part is Ukraine, all of here. This part here is Russia. This part here is Belarus, okay? And so uh, this is exactly where Chernobyl was. I repeat, these are to the same scale, and this is roughly the same coloring uh, as to the levels of cesium uh, ground contamination. The first thing that you will notice right away is that um, um, the, level, the area of contamination was much greater. Uh, I'll show you later, it was about 50 times greater than uh, uh, Chernobyl compared with Fukushima. On the other hand, you have to keep in mind that this area here is rather sparsely populated, whereas Japan is very highly populated. Okay, source terms. Um, the Source terms is a, is a jargon phrase meaning the amount of radioactivity. And this is a comparison showing the two main nuclides, cesium and iodine, and showing that they are, Chernobyl was uh, between seven and 12 times greater than, than at Fukushima. Gives you a rough ballpark idea. We're talking about a factor of 10 here, uh, greater at, uh, at Chernobyl. Um, the next important uh, uh, factor to look at is collective doses, and this is uh, after 80 years. The, uh, in Europe, the collective dose, this is uh, on scare figures here, 40,000 person sieverts. And in Japan, uh, again on scare, uh, 48,000. So again, roughly a factor of 10 uh, greater at Chernobyl. And if you look at thyroid, it's 20 times greater. There's a, many of you may know that there's a big debate amongst uh, scientists as to the number of thyroid cancers after uh, Fukushima. Um, I'm not going to get into that because the passions run very high, but uh, the, the raw fact is that there was 20 times more, the collective dose wise, 20 times more at, uh, Chernobyl compared with Fukushima. So if you look at the populations exposed at Chernobyl, these are all unscare data, um, 2008. Um, half a million cleanup workers. Uh, they keep on sending in more and more cleanup workers until they get a maximum of 20 million sievers, then now they go again, that's why the figure keeps on increasing. About the same number of uh, evacuees is at uh, Fukushima. Um, if you look at very highly contaminated areas, and it was above 40 kilobacks, um, there are still six, uh, uh, sorry, the number of people, six million <laughs> today. So that means six million people, six and a half, are still ex living in areas and are still exposed to high levels of concentration 30 years after Chernobyl. Uh, if we look at all of the areas, all the three countries, Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia, um, we're talking about 100 million. They've got lower levels, um, on average, about 10 kilobacks. Um, and um, if you look at Western Europe, um, it's half a billion. And these are all average doses, as I say, average dose here, <laughs> in the um, And you can see that this is the toll for Chernobyl, uh, massive exposures. And you can, what you can do is multiply this column by this column and 
add up the whole lot and you get the collective dose, which turns out to be 400,000. If we look at the areas contaminated, as I mentioned earlier, um, you can see one and a half million square kilometers and, uh, contaminated by Chernobyl, about 40% of Europe. Um, Fukushima, 30,000 square kilometers and about 8% of Japan. So you can get an idea here. I hope you get the take home figure that, um, that Chernobyl was really much worse than Fukushima. This is not to downplay Fukushima at all, certainly not, but it just gives you an idea of the scale of comparison. Um, continuing the comparison, uh, about the same number of evacuees, individuals in most contaminated areas. Well, we don't have a, a very, Anska didn't have a figure, but Fukushima Prefecture has got two million people living in it. Um, uh, and I, for the purposes of the slide, I said that's the most contaminated area. By and large, it's correct, but the um, f explosions in, in Fukushima were very, very heterogeneous. Some bits got it really bad and others didn't. And so this is ballpark figure here. But it compares to six million in the most contaminated areas in so former Soviet Union. Um, clean up workers. Well, I've got a figure here of 40,000. That's from TEPCO. Uh, I think it's probably higher than that. But again, a factor of 12 higher. Economic cost, well, we haven't got a really good figure for Chernobyl. Not that I would consider to be reliable. Um, but uh, it's going to be high. Uh, immediate deaths, well, um, quite a few, uh, how would I put it? Um, commentators in the UK only dwell on the fact that there's about 50 fire, mostly firefighters, were, were killed within a few months uh, after Chernobyl. Um, predicted, fa predicted fatal cancers. Uh, as I showed you at Chernobyl, 40,000 over the next 80 years, and 5,000 at Fukushima. And this figure comes from me looking at the unscared data for collective doses. Right. Um, may I put a plug in for this um, this report, which was funded by the wonderful people of Vienna. If you people would like to have a holiday away from the horrible pro-nuclear attitude that we have in this country, go to Vienna. Oh, I'll tell you, the welcome you get will just be astonishing. And you actually meet government officials who smile and shake your hand and nod. <laughs> It was wonderful, it really was. Uh, so that's a nice plug for uh, the nice, and I'll tell you, uh, David and uh, Reinhold, oh, really, and their colleagues, it was a lot of them, really, really lovely people. Uh, Austria is leading the way, no doubt about it, absolutely. Um, um, and I, I hope that uh, you managed to read the report. Okay, thank you very much.